Following their previous hit singles, the pressure was greater than ever for Girls Aloud to continue their reign on the charts. Reality TV had rarely seen its acts achieve success past their debut album, and the media were ready and waiting to label them as just another flash in the pan. But with Xenomania stepping up to craft the entirety of their sophomore album, naysayers would be left eating their own words. This is Girls Aloud, What Will The Neighbours Say? Although their debut album, Sound of the Underground, and its singles had been successful, by early 2004, Polydor Records were considering dropping Girls Aloud from the label. Sales of the album were perceived as underperforming, considering the huge audience of around 20 million viewers that had tuned in to watch pop stars The Rivals, which, according to record executives, was not turning into 20 million sales. However, Polydor's then-marketing director, Peter Lorraine, appealed to the label and convinced them to allow the group to record a second album. Polydor once again enlisted the talents of Brian Higgins and Xenomania to work on the new album, this time requesting they produce the second album in its entirety, stating to Brian Higgins that the label would not continue with Girls Aloud unless Xenomania were on board, as they were the only people who truly understood how Girls Aloud could work moving forwards. Brian Higgins commented that the pressure to come up with singles was immense, but Xenomania were able to have a lot of fun working on ideas that were maybe a little too odd to be on the radio. You gotta get it. This time around, the girls would get more involved with co-writing some songs. Big Brother was co-written by Cheryl, Hear Me Out, co-written by Sarah, Thank Me Daddy was co-written by Kimberly. I Say A Prayer For You was co-written and entirely sung by Nicola and 100 Different Ways was a Nadine co-write which she also sings solo. I'm cool until Other notable tracks recorded include Deadlines and Diets which was originally released in 2000 by Moonbaby, a pseudonym of Xenomania songwriter Miranda Cooper. Graffiti My Soul, which was intended for Britney Spears' In The Zone, but was turned down for its lack of a chorus. And Here We Go, which was also originally recorded by Moonbaby. Aqua singer Liana Nystrom, who co-wrote Girls Aloud's No Good Advice, also recorded a version of the song for her 2003 album Play With Me. A reworked version of Moon Baby's Here We Go would become the theme song to the television cartoon series Totally Spice. The album was recorded from April to September 2004, although its lead single was released in June 2004 whilst the album was still being worked on. The album's first single was technically their cover of Jump, although the song initially appeared on the re-release of Sound of the Underground, it also featured on the new album as well. For the lead single from the upcoming record, Polydor presented the band four song choices, including The Show, Wake Me Up, Graffiti My Soul and Androgynous Girls. Although Wake Me Up was the preferred choice, it was later deemed too hard sounding and the record company did not want to take the risk, and they would also later delegate Androgynous Girls to a B-side to the album's second single three months later.
Hi everybody, welcome to our fifth video shoot. This video shoot's a bit different. We're all playing characters in this video shoot. As you can see, I'm Maxi Wax and I've been waxing a very sexy man's chest today, so my job's too hard. I think Nicola's in there now spraying somebody with tan and she sprayed loser on the back or something. It's all very fun. We're all having a lovely time. It's not like a hate man campaign, but it's sort of like, you know, all girls for themselves. The boys think that they're all looking gorgeous and whatever else, and we're just not seeing it at all. He still thinks he looks gorgeous. <laughs> and playback. Oh, we're doing this really great video for Girls Aloud, who are wonderful, and um, with a really great director, Trudy, who's wonderful. The story is really groovy. It's like, if you, if you listen to the song, the song is like this, a kind of ironic take about the relationship between men and women. And in this case, the women get a little bit back on the men. They take a little bit of a, the mickey. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Filming my scene with the boys where I've been abusing them, you know, killing their hair and everything else, which is really good fun because I used to hairdress when I was younger and I went to college and stuff and, and it, I've got a lot of friends in that area as well which will be laughing themselves silly when they see that because basically that's what I was like at college, I just didn't care, I was just like, yeah, whatever, you know, and the poor lads, I mean, they were shocks. It's all good fun. All in the name of girls and lads. The show is a really fun loving song. It's just for everybody up having a laugh. And I play like a beautician and I have to put like this stupid green guacamole um, mask all over this guy and throw fruit on his face and stuff and and it was really fun. I did enjoy doing it. The boy was quite good, so that's always a bonus. We've had a few different setups in the video. Um, we've had one where we've done dancing around chairs, um, one where we've just danced by ourselves with brooms. Ready? And board in. And roll cameras. God bless you all. <laughs> Well, that's it. That's the end of a very long day, but it's actually been the most fun I think we've ever had on a video, and we're all really excited to see how it turns out. So I'm going to go get Boys some girl, sleep, we and uh, we hope you enjoy nice the video. Bye. Released on the 28th of June 2004, the album's lead single would be the pulsating synth-pop track, The Show. The song garnered a positive response from music critics, who deemed it another unique production by Xenomania, and it was considered one of the best songs of 2004 by the Times newspaper. It debuted and peaked at number two on the UK singles chart, becoming their fifth consecutive single to chart within the top three. The song also peaked inside the top ten in Ireland, reaching number five.
For the second single, Love Machine, the band initially was in disagreement with Polydor regarding its release, with the girls wanting to release Deadlines and Diets instead. Kimberly and Nadine in particular voiced their disapproval of the single release, stating it would be career suicide, with Nadine suggesting the group would be known as Laughing Stocks if the song came out. However, despite their reservations, Love Machine was picked as the second single, being released on the 13th of September 2004. Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl from Girls Aloud. I'm the Dean. I'm Nicola. Hi, I'm Kimberly. I'm Sarah. And today we're on our sixth video set for Love Machine. Ladies, you're damn right. We're going to be in a, like a smoky jazz bar with the drums and the double bass and the piano and stuff. Just really a night out with the girls. Nobody's perfect. So there's where we've been doing the setup today. I just finished mine. I'm shaking like a leaf. I was so nervous. And I can't wait for it to be the group shot so all the girls are around us so I don't feel as isolated. It's got a bit of a timeless feel about it, a bit more of a, a rocky sort of jazzy feel to it. That reminds me of a, a TV show back in the 50s or something. Come take my hand, understand that you can, you're my man and I need you tonight. Come meet my dreams, honey heart. I'm Stuart, I'm directing the video for Girls Aloud. There's a couple of slow sequences in the song, they're like dream sequences. So they've put like lights that flare behind us. We're using special star filters. They actually go in front of the lens. And then we have special like lasers and lights behind which make everything reflect and burn out and get really dreamy. I watched a little bit of the playback but I only wanted to watch myself once because it was going to put me in a bad mood. You just go straight for the bad points. You're always nitpicking. Oh, my eyes look weird, or oh, my nose looks weird, or oh my god, that doesn't look like me. It's just weird. Diamonds here, diamonds here, diamonds everywhere, really. It's a girls' night out. As things progress, it's going to get more and more crazy and they let their hair down and everyone's going to kind of sweat it. You've yet to see that. That's going to happen. <laughs>
I hope everybody enjoyed our behind the scenes at our new Love Machine video and we hope to see you soon and smile. Bye! Yeah. Love Machine debuted at number two on the UK singles chart and remained there for two weeks, being held off the top spot by Call On Me by Eric Pritz. In Ireland, the song debuted at number nine and remained at the same position for three weeks, becoming Girls Aloud's first single to fail to enter the top five. Ladies, you're damn right, you can't read a man's mind, we're living in two tribes and headed for war. Cheryl later stated that despite her initially hating the song, that the success of the single taught the group that they were not always right regarding single decisions and that they needed to listen to their label from time to time. Before we head back into the chart, we've got a sneak preview for you. On Monday, Girls Aloud released the official track for the Children in Need campaign. The track is a cover of the Pretenders top ten hit, I'll Stand By You. We hooked up with the girls on set to talk about Chrissy Hind looking sexy and their problem with sand. The idea behind the video, I think, is just quite simple, really. Just the song's so lovely and all the lyrics in the song, you know, are quite meaningful and it's got, like, a nice message. I'll stand by you. There isn't really a connection, really, between the, the lyric from the song, I'd say, but I think we're just going for more earthy, natural theme. We're um, planted on some kind of a desert island and we're all kind of wearing sort of raggedy sort of clothes. Come on and talk to me now. I don't do the sun-kissed look. I do the red roll look. Just lie in the sand and sing into the camera and then just lean against a tree <laughs> instead of throwing ourselves around. The song is totally different for us as a band. It is kind of weird singing it uh, myself because I have known the song so well. Everybody knows the song so well. Chrissy Hines doesn't mind too much and just that you're not going to make a fool of yourself, really. Set, which is never really a good yeah. thing because you're always got the start and the nerves. And I haven't seen the set yet, so I'm scared. Yeah. Normally, if one of the other uh, girls goes first, they kind of warm up the atmosphere, so you're, you're all right by the time you go. Oh, this is good. Oh. This is good. The only really bad thing I think about this set is the sand. Absolutely everywhere I've got sand. I've had to take my shoes off and put my slippers on. Clean the sand from between my toes. We were just saying before, should we just lie and tell everyone what's the Sahara? What's the Sahara? Safari. Up my arms, up my legs, under my dress, if you get what I mean. It 
probably looks like I'm really comfy, doesn't it? Oh, I'm ah. have two big bruises right on my bum cheeks. It's always easier to do a video to a faster song because you're dancing, you're smiling, you're having a laugh. But when it's videos like this, it's like you just feel so cheesy. I hate watching myself back because you never like the look of yourself. And especially when you're trying to ride around and pull your dress and just feel embarrassed for myself. <laughs> Normally I'd sit out and watch the monitor and where they're performing I'd cheer and stuff. Yeah, we do encourage each other a lot on the video sets. We have quite a laugh as well. Once you've done a video, it's with you. That's it forever. And you want to try and look the best you can, don't you? Look back on it in years to come and go, hey, that was your mum. <laughs> They'll do their kids proud, I'm sure. Keep watching Hit 40 UK to see if Girls Aloud can take our Stand By You to the top. Our Stand By You was a song recorded by English-American rock band The Pretenders from their sixth studio album, Last of the Independents, from 1994. The song was written by Chrissy Hind and the songwriting team of Tom Kelly and Billy Steinberg and produced by Ian Stanley. It reached number 16 on the US Billboard Hot 100 and number 10 in the UK. On the 15th of November, Girls Aloud would release their cover version of the song as the official charity single for the 2004 Children in Need campaign, their version being produced by Xenomania. The track was announced as a single just 10 days before its release. It became Girls Aloud's second number one on the UK singles chart, spending two weeks at the top position and receiving a silver certification. The song entered the Irish singles charts at number four. It spent a second week at number four before rising to number three. It spent three more consecutive weeks at number three, it then slipped back down to number four and spent two more weeks in the top five. So Following their number one hit with I'll Stand By You, Girls Aloud's second album, What Will The Neighbours Say, would see its official release on the 29th of November 2004. The album title comes from a lyric in the song Love Machine, which asks, what will the neighbours say this time? This lyric is a reference itself to a line from Sound of the Underground, in which Girls Aloud sing, neighbours banging on the bathroom wall. What Will The Neighbours Say received positive reviews from music critics and became the group's second top 10 album in the UK Albums Chart, where it peaked at number 6. It was certified platinum with sales of over 300,000 copies. In Ireland, it debuted at number 12. The album was released in selective European territories in late 2004, however it failed to generate much interest due to lack of promotion, with the exception of Greece, where it reached the top 10. The international versions of the album exclude the bonus tracks I Say a Prayer for You and 100 Different Ways. And I'll never desert you. when it puts the helmets back on. Yeah. <laughs> and wake me up. It just looks so fake then, doesn't it? God. I mean, there's no way you would think we were really driving. It's funny because Ashley's nephew the other day apparently was watching this and he said to his nan, I never knew Auntie Cheryl could ride a motorbike. <laughs> I kept threatening to turn it on and drive off. They were like, no! <laughs> God. 
I don't think the insurance would cover us. They no. never let me drive oh, anything. Poor Nicola, you know, she She's was poorly. so poorly on this photo shoot. I shoes. like that bit where you stick the thing on. That's cheap though because it was actually stuck on before and that was just pretend. I know. Sorry to burst your bubble. Oh, I just liked it. Let's sit through the haze. Okay. Remember all that choreography we had to do on the bikes? Yeah. <laughs> it's good though, I think. It's hard to pretend you're riding a motorbike when you're actually not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's when I kind of started feeling a bit more rock chick. Yeah. That's when I really came Was that what inspired you? I think a little bit more, like, fashion-wise. Oh, well. my God. I have to laugh at that. Kimberly's got bad goo written on her arm. She couldn't be further from Bad goo! <laughs> <laughs> Good girl, maybe. Oh. So you look a bit hard-faced, though, this. That's the only thing. It was nice to have hair to flick for once, because all you guys have always had hair to flick. Yeah. And I never do. Oh, bless you. I think you look better with the shorter, though. I got really into that crimping. Yeah. Do you remember, like, the little strands <laughs> of crimps? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my I sister. Love that. My sister says, where's she putting them? Where's she? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is she what doing else with is her she hair? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you look like you're going to cry. Oh, bless. I look like a baby. Both of you look like you're going to cry then. I like this bit when they when they quick and walk. speed things up. Yeah, I do like this bit. And I like the sky behind us. Look. And again, mm. Mm. Cheryl mm. is in a crop jacket. I don't think I had a style. The Dean was going through the boob stage, I think. Ah, oh, this bit. Yeah, yeah this bit's cool. Thing. Strong. Well, do you remember bang, Beth was bang. telling us? Yeah. Bang. Oh, yeah. Bang. Bang. I really like it. Yeah. And then we all had to do this choreography and they used, uh, look, we all did the scene. Mm -hmm. I like the way they, min they merge it all in. <laughs> <laughs> I like that as well. Yeah! <laughs> oh no. I love that three earring thing as well. Oh, poor Nicola. Every time I say this, I just think she was poor Nicola, she was so ill. Oh, that's clever how they've done that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Do you like that? I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Ding, Neither ding, am I. With the hands. <laughs> ah! I hear that. That, is, that just takes it over the cheese edge. <laughs>《Released as the fourth and final single from the album on the 21st of February 2005, Wake Me Up debuted at number four on the UK singles chart, becoming Girls Aloud's eighth top five single, but their first single to miss the top three. In Ireland, the single debuted and peaked at number six.
Following a successful tour in support of the album, the girls would jump straight back into the recording studio to start work on their third album. Once again working exclusively with Xenomania and once more turning the traditional pop song completely on its head. Thanks for watching.